okay what are the topic we are doing okay atoms and molecules i think no right so in the atoms and molecules <coughs> so this was discussed like any matter is made up of a tiny particle if you take a matter if you break into two pieces again you break into two pieces again you break into two pieces continuously break on break finally a stage will come where we cannot break it and uh, that particle is known as an atom okay and this idea when it was there in india also and that smallest particle in india it was known as a paramanu okay and uh, in greek it was known as a atom the meaning of atom is uncuttable or indivisible right after that we discussed about the law of conservation of mass and law of constant proportions so law of conservation of mass states what mass can neither be created not destroyed during the chemical reaction the total mass of the reactant is equal to total mass of the product okay so that is about the law of conservation of mass and then we also discussed about the law of constant proportions so law of constant proportions what it states is eh? are you there yeah okay law of constant proportions what it states is <coughs> a compound is made up of a fixed ratio of atoms or molecules for example if you take the water and whatever the source it may be the water is made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen the atomic ratio of hydrogen and oxygen is 2 is to 1 and uh, and the atomic mass ratio is uh, 1 is to 8 hydrogen and oxygen similarly if you take the ammonia the atomic ratio is nitrogen and hydrogen in ammonia is 1 is to 3 and mass ratio is 14 is to 3 okay so this we discussed in the previous class and some examples also we discussed here discussed here so see here the mass ratio in the calcium oxide is 5 is to 2 how the calcium is 40 molecular mass of calcium is how much 40 and oxygen is 16 okay 8 to the 8 pi is and magnesium sulfide this is magnesium and sulfur magnesium is 24 and sulfur is 32 8 3 is the 8 4 is and sodium chloride sodium is 23 and chlorine is 35.5 so it cannot be divisible so that is 23.23 is 35 that is fixed okay so today we are going to discuss about once uh, dalton's atomic model okay so already i think we discussed about the dalton's atomic model in the previous chapter somewhere so dalton's atomic model what it says is uh, <coughs> any matter is made up of a tiny particles called atoms is already we know and these atoms are indivisible and uh, invisible means we cannot uh, divide them and we cannot uh, okay uh, see them okay and these particles can neither be created nor destroyed during the chemical reaction this also we discussed so that uh, can neither be created nor destroyed then we also discussed that um, atoms of same element having the similar properties and atoms of different elements have the different properties like um, for example if you take one particular like uh, copper and whatever the source may be if you take the only copper atoms and if you check the properties the physical and chemical properties of a copper atom remain same whatever the source may be okay but um, the atoms of different elements have the different properties right like if you take the copper and if you take the gold or a silver okay so this properties are different that properties are different okay because they are both are of different substances okay and next uh, atoms combine in whole okay combine in the ratio of small whole numbers to form the compounds okay atoms will combine in small ratios to form the compounds and relative number of kinds of atoms are constant in a given compound so you take one compound like water i said 
So, whenever you take the water, the ratio of the atoms remains the same, that is 2 is to 1. Okay. Ammonia, that is 1 is to 3, nitrogen and hydrogen. So, these are the features of Dalton's atomic theory, right? So, any doubt in this one? I think already we have discussed this Dalton's atomic theory somewhere here. Right. So, want to take the screenshot, you can take the screenshot of this one. Done. Right. So, now let us see what is an atom. Okay. So, here you see, already we discussed that uh, the smallest tiny particle of matter which cannot be divided further, okay, is called as the atom. And of course, according to Dalton's theory, this definition is correct. But um, according to new theory, modern theory, so this can be divisible. Already, I think we discussed in the structure of an atom, right? So, atom is breakable and when you break the atom, uh, it consists of some subatomic particles like electrons, protons and neutrons, right? Yes or no? Hmm. So, So, here according to Dalton's atomic theory, atom is uh, atom is indivisible. Indivisible means what it cannot be broken and this is the tiniest particle of matter. Okay? But uh, this Dalton theory was proposed in which year 1800 or 1805 okay? during this time, but later already we discussed in the atomic structure like atoms can be divisible, J.A. Thompson discovered the electrons from the atoms, right? So, uh, based on that, uh, so uh, how can you define the atom is, now the new definition of atom is what? Uh, atom can be defined as the smallest unit, okay, the smallest unit of matter, of matter that takes part that uh, takes part uh, in chemical reaction okay so this is a now at present how can we define the atom so, at present we can define the atom like atom is the smallest unit of matter that takes part in the chemical reaction, but it is not a tiniest particle. Atom is a not the tiniest particle, but we can say that during the chemical reactions, when the chemical reactions are taking place, the smallest unit that takes part in the chemical reaction is atom. Okay. For example, hydrogen and for example, H2. Okay. So, here you see hydrogen molecule that is H2 and the reacting with for example, chlorine. So, it forms a 2 HCl. Okay, so what's happening here? These two hydrogens, okay, H2 means what? Uh, the two hydrogens are bonded together, so the bond will break, okay. So then what happens here? Here I write, so two hydrogens are this, this is the hydrogen molecule and combining with the chlorine molecule to form two HCl, right. So here you learn in the higher classes that uh, there is a bond between two hydrogen atoms that is called as a covalent bond, okay. Bond means what? Uh, like a force of attraction, okay. So, a force of attraction is there between the two hydrogen atoms, so that molecule is formed. So, the, the, this molecule during the chemical reaction, what happens? Uh, this uh, hydrogen and hydrogen splits into two hydrogens, right. Similarly, here chlorine also during the chemical reaction, it splits, okay, into chlorine and the chlorine. Okay. Now, what happens? Uh, these two hydro hydrogen and chlorine will combine and uh, these two hydro hydrogen and chlorine will combine. Now, here it forms one HCl and here it forms one HCl. So, total two HCl's are forming. So, like this two HCl is formed. Okay. So, here in what's happening? Here hydrogen atom is combining with the chlorine atom. Okay. So, hydrogen at the chlorine. So, atomic wise they are combining with each other. So, what we can say that atom is, 
atom is the smallest unit of matter that takes part in the chemical reaction so this is the actual definition of uh, okay atom so note down this definition somewhere <coughs> right right so So here, according to Dalton's atomic theory, the atom is the tiniest particle of matter which can be divided, which cannot be divided further. That's the old definition. So now what I give that is a new definition. And here, okay. And here you see, atom is the smallest building block of matter. Means what term? Atoms will join together to form a matter. Whatever the matter it may be, any matter is made up of a, okay, uh, atoms. Okay, examples here sodium, hydrogen, oxygen, these are all are the atoms and they combine and they form the matter. Now, what is the size of an atom? So, size of an atom is uh, the distance between the nucleus and outermost orbit is known as the atomic size or atomic radius. Okay, so what is the, this one, the distance between the, the distance between the nucleus and outermost orbit is known as the okay means what um, here you know that for example let us take the hydrogen atom hydrogen atomic number is one yes electronic configuration what we write uh, only one you know about that k shell i think we discussed about the, the atomic structure k l n shell should be there yes or no okay so hydrogen has one one electron that one electron is present in the okay k shell so now hydrogen atomic number means what uh, hydrogen has one proton one neutron and one electron okay in this uh, proton and neutron is present in the nucleus yes so let us draw the nucleus this is one proton and one neutron okay this is the nucleus and it has one shell so let this is one shell okay only one shell now it has one electron so you know that electron will be revolving around the nucleus so i'll put the electron here so this is the electron is revolving around the nucleus now what is atomic size atomic size means what um, the distance from the center of nucleus this is the center of nucleus the distance between the center of nucleus to outermost shell outermost shell means what a last shell okay so your electron is revolving in the k shell so the distance from here to here this is called um, atomic radius atomic radius okay or we can say that atomic size this is atomic radius or atomic size clear is this one okay now for example okay now for example if we take some lithium atom we take Okay, we take some lithium. So lithium, you know that lithium symbol is Li and uh, its atomic number is 3. So what we can write the electronic configuration? How can we write the 3? 2 comma 1. So you have first shell 2 and the second shell 1. And as atomic number is 3, lithium has uh, 3 protons and of course its mass number is 4 so 4 neutrons and the atomic number 3 so 3 electrons okay now how you draw the structure for this one so here you see the 3 protons and 3 neutrons are present in the nucleus so 3 neutrons plus 3 sorry yeah so 3 okay protons and 4 neutrons are present in the nucleus red color one is nucleus now here see these are the orbits let this is a k shell and this is a l shell okay so k shell and l shell this is k shell this is l shell now here if you see the electrons so here in the k shell two electrons are there one and two and in the l shell one electron is there so you can put one electron so here which is the outermost shell which is the last shell here l shell so now the distance from the center of nucleus to here 
this distance is called the atomic radius or atomic size is this clear to you ha huh. so that is about the atomic size and uh, atomic um, okay uh, radius so here we can define that uh, so the distance between nucleus and outermost orbit is known as the atomic size and atomic radius and atomic size is generally expressed in nanometers okay so in which they express nanometers what is the nano yes very good 10 to the power of minus 9 is called a nano so here you know that for example if you take 10 to the power of uh, okay so here i'll write small here i'll write here so see here so if you take a 10 to the power of minus 3 is there you think means 1 by 1000 so that is called a milli what it is called a milli or millimeter and 10 to the power of minus 6 <laughs> okay is called a micro what it is called a micro 10 to the power of minus 9 is called a nano okay this is nano so 1 nanometer is equal to 1 by 10 to the power of 1 by 10 to the power of 9 so when you take this 10 to the power of 9 as a numerator you might have already learned that 1 by 8 to the power of m can be written as 8 to the power of minus m in mathematics did you study this one ah so here 1 by 10 to the power of 9 if you take this uh, this becomes what a 10 to the power of minus 9 meter so 1 nanometer can be written as 10 to the power of minus 9 nano um, meter 10 to the power of minus 9 meter the meaning is what 1 by 10 to the power of 9 okay so and you can write in this way also so here you can see here 1 nanometer is equal to 10 to the power of sorry 1 by 10 to the power of 9 meters now here you see 1 nanometer okay so here this is in the denominator okay i am taking this side so this becomes what now numerator. ah numerator so then it becomes what uh, into so 1 nanometer 1 nanometer into 10 to the power of 9 10 to the power of 9 is equal to here 1 is left here meter is left 1 meter so 1 into 10 to the power of 9 10 to the power of 9 nanometer is equal to 1 meter so therefore 1 meter is equal to 10 to the power of 9 meters also we can write is this clear to you yes. ah, and uh, atomic radius of hydrogen you know that smallest atom is a hydrogen atom okay about the atomic number is one this is the first element in the periodic table so in the periodic table already we discussed that means normally I said that there are 118 elements are known to us in that first element is hydrogen with atomic number one okay so this is the smallest atom so here the size of the hydrogen atom is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters <coughs> this is the size of the hydrogen atom okay so now if we compare this size okay uh, with the atomic size with the other things what we see normally so the size of hydrogen atom is equal to 10 to the power of minus 10 okay 10 to the power of minus 10 meter that is the smallest one smallest one then if you see the water molecule okay water molecule means what h2o okay h2o molecule its size in terms of 10 to the power of minus 9 means little bit bigger so here minus 10 minus 9 this to which one is bigger minus 9 is bigger because negative number is there okay so minus is greater than the minus 10 so have water molecule size is greater than the hydrogen atom then you see the hemoglobin you know that in the blood we have a hemoglobin okay you might have studied in the biology yes so that molecule hemoglobin molecule size is 10 to the power of minus 8 means what it is still bigger than the water molecule hemoglobin okay then come to the grain of sand so see here till this we can't see these are invisible to us we can't see this all okay 10 to the power of minus 8 10 to the power of minus 9 10 to the power of minus 10 we can't see 
बट यू कैन सी द स्मॉल ग्रेन ऑफ सैंड सैंड इस तो कहा सिंपल था ओके द सैंड स्मॉल ग्रेन ऑफ सैंड इफ यू टेक एट साइज इज टेन टू पॉर ऑफ माइनस फोर दिस इज विजिबल टू अस ओके इफ यूर आईज और मीन्स इफ आई इज आई इज गुड यूर यंग बॉय सो यूर आईज मे बी गुड सो यू कैन सी दैट टेन टू पॉर ऑफ माइनस फोर सो सैंड पार्टिकल इज अ वेरी स्मॉल पार्टिकल द स्मॉल पार्टिकल वी कैन सी एंड इट साइज इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेन टू द पॉर ऑफ माइनस फोर राइट नाउ कम टू द टेन टू पॉर नेक्स्ट एंड एंड द साइज इज टेन टू पॉर ऑफ माइनस टू कैन यू सी वॉट इज इन द टेन टू पॉर ऑफ माइनस टू मीटर मीन्स centimeter very good so 10 to the power of minus 2 that is it centimeter so centimeter is weak. so here it is in terms of centimeter and uh, so ant size you know no ant so ant size in that we, we can see very clearly no issue and then and 10 to the power of minus 1 is watermelon okay so 10 centimeter in diameter or radius something it will be there so this is a um, relative sizes so till here we can see these sizes we can see our eye can see up to 10 to the power of minus 4 only okay if very very sharp eyes are there maximum we may see 10 to the power of minus 5 but less than that we cannot see so 10 to the power of minus 6 is called micro here i see it as here 10 to the power of minus 6 is called what a micro so from there onwards if want to see then we need a microscope what we need microscope so micro so micro value is 10 to the power of minus 6 so uh, till there uh, 10 to the power of minus 4 and maximum up to 10 to the power of minus 5 we can see but um, beyond that we cannot uh, see okay so there we can use a microscope so by using microscope we can see 10 to the power of minus 6 10 to the power of minus 7 and uh, maybe we can see 10 to the power of minus 8 also but we cannot see again 10 to the power of minus 9 and minus 10 by using normal microscope we want a powerful electronic microscope is required what we required powerful electronic microscope is required okay so that is about the size atomic size is this clear to you chalo take the screenshot of this one yes Hmm. Yes. No, hydrogen is small. In in atom, that means to be only the smaller. But if you go to less than that, you'll have a nucleus. One thousandth part of the atom is a nucleus. Okay. So one sorry one lakhth part of the atom is a nucleus. So here we written 10 to the power of minus 10 meters is hydrogen, and the nucleus of hydrogen is 10 to the power of minus 15. Okay, so one lakhth part is smaller. Means if you take the hydrogen break into one lakh equal parts, so then what is the each part size? That is the size of the nucleus. Nucleus is still smaller. Okay, right. Have you taken the screenshot of this one? okay okay so about the now atoms we discussed so i said that there are 118 elements are there in the periodic table and in some net uh, okay in the, if you search in the google maybe it some shows that more than 118 also but actually 118 is confirmed by the iupac you know upsc international union for pure and applied chemistry this is like uh, okay head of the chemistry is an organization which is like head of the chemistry okay and uh, this iupac uh, iupsc uh, frame the rules and regulations and confirms everything from the chemistry okay so according to that iupsc then we have 118 elements or known now here you know that hydrogen till now i have written that uh, okay hydrogen uh symbol is h um, lithium symbol is li and uh, sodium symbol is na and uh, so on okay but who introduced this first uh, symbols to this elements so the first uh, symbols are introduced by the dalton who introduced the symbols to the elements dalton 
dalton dalton entity is the symbols of the element but that symbols are little bit complicated okay that symbols are little bit uh, complicated okay so some of the element symbols okay it's uh, fine but uh, it became difficult when it uh, okay to write the chemical reactions or to remember the symbols so it became difficult okay and then beth gds who was a scientist uh, beth gds okay beth gds was the next scientist uh, who introduced now okay uh, what is the method of representation now what we are calling the method of representation of elements was introduced by the Berzelius. So Berzelius said that no, the what the Dalton uh, give the symbols, so that are not quite good, and it will be difficult to remember, even as well as uh, to write the chemical reactions. So that's what what he has done. He started giving, okay, like uh, first uh, letter of that element, or first two letters of the element, or first letter with uh, some prominent, okay, letter in that element. Like this, he started giving. the symbols of that elements with only by using one or two letters so this all this uh, we are following till now is this clear to you ha ah, so here you can see on the screen bergelius so sorry dalton okay so here you see dalton was the first scientist to, to use the symbols for elements in a very specific sense okay when he used the symbol of an element um, he also made a definite quantity of that element uh, that is one atom of element so dalton gives the first time he used the symbols for the elements and when he gave the symbols to the elements and uh, by keeping the quantity of that element in a uh, okay mind uh, so he had definite quantity of an element okay so here you see he gave the symbol to the hydrogen as see this is the symbol of hydrogen with the one small dot and say carbon okay with some okay color inside oxygen again similar and phosphorus you see here like this is given symbol sulfur iron copper lead something okay these are the symbols used by the dalton okay so dalton used this this type of symbols uh, okay but uh, this are difficult yes or no so to remember this will be little bit difficult to us and even if you want to write the chemical reaction like um, just now i require written one equation like hydrogen react with chlorine to hydrochloric acid so how can you write this ke chemical reaction by using this symbols is it possible to write possible but it will be difficult to write right yes or no so that's what uh, so this way of uh, representing of elements was not quite um, okay easier and what you say comfortable okay so that's what um, here berchelius so this site is very important this name okay berchelius suggested the symbol of elements um, okay made up of made from one or two letters of the name of the element okay so bergelius introduced okay a new way okay a new method of uh, giving the symbols to the element and this um, consists of only one letter or two letters okay so that's all so by using this he gave the symbols and um, IUPAC just now i told you that here you can't see the IUPAC IUPAC so IUPAC stands for international union of pure and applied chemistry i international u union p pure a applied c chemistry so IUPAC very important thing here this you have to remember very important thing so IUPAC international union of pure and applied chemistry approves the names of the elements so i said you know this is an international organization of chemistry so this is like head of the chemistry throughout the world so they will decide like what the element name should be given or which element should be conformed and everything regarding the science they frame the rules and regulations also okay so this is the international union for pure and applied chemistry and they approved this method also bergelius method is this clear to you yes so dalton was the first scientist so he gave the symbols to the elements but these are the symbols these are not convenient not comfortable not easy to remember or to write or to write the chemical reactions so that's what uh, here bergelius suggested one more method and in this method we are using only one or two letters of uh, the name of that english letters of uh, name the name of that element okay and even it was approved by the 
International Pure International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry that is called IUPAC. Is this clear? Shall I take the screenshot or write this one? Okay, I will go this side. Done. Right. Shall I so here today? Here we are going to okay. Ah, uh, here some elements symbols are there. all these symbols of elements are very very important for uh, next topics even for the next class also like you are in ninth class in the 10th class okay these all symbols will be used yeah okay during the chemical reaction so that's what so see here here the symbol of an element uh, is formed by writing only first letter or first letter followed by the second letter or some other letter of english name or latin name of element so for example if you see here hydrogen is there so hydrogen is starting with which letter h right so hydrogen is starting with the letter h hydrogen is starting with the letter h So has given the symbol for hydrogen as H, right? Now, if you go to the next one, for example, helium, right? So helium already helium is also starting with H, but H already is given to the hydrogen. So that's what uh, he has taken the two letters. In that term, uh, okay, first letter is hydrogen as it is, which is followed by the second letter that is E. So helium. clear ah huh. so like this similarly you can take the carbon okay so carbon is starting with the letter c so the symbol of carbon is given as okay c but for example if you take the calcium okay calcium here c calcium is also starting with c but c is already given to the carbon so that's what your second letter is what a so they are taken the two letters the first letter is followed by the second letter now similarly you can take the cobalt cobalt okay so cobalt you see again c already is given but the uh, beside number is what co so here it is given co followed by the second letter okay now you see here for example you take the chromium okay chromium the chromium spelling is what term uh, C H R O M I U M. Okay, so here the symbol of what is the symbol of chromium? C R. So here why they have taken the C R because the prominent letter is cro chromium. So in the prominent letter is a chromium. So they have taken as a C R. Okay, so like this, right? So in this way they have taken the name and for some elements. for some elements they have taken their latin names also okay for example the sodium is there okay the symbol of sodium is what na why here it is not related to anything so sodium the sodium n not there but they have taken na why ah its latin name is natrium similarly potassium what is the symbol of potassium k here k the letter is not there in the word potassium but here taken as k why yeah the latin name of potassium is kalium what is the name of latin name kalium so kalium is starting with the k so like this uh, they are given the prominent letter or sometimes uh, they have taken the latin names in that way they are given the okay symbols to that elements is this clear to you ha uh -huh. so 
here the symbol of element is formed by writing only first letter or first letter followed by the second or some other letter of english name or latin name so in this way they are given the elements and while writing very important thing is that if only one letter is there then you represent with a capital letter if you want to write hydrogen the symbol anywhere you need to write the h capital letter if you want to write carbon so write the c capital letter if you write the fluorine you write the capital letter f so if it is only one letter is there that should be represented with the capital letter but uh, the symbol of any element consists of two letters you think in that the first letter only should be the capital and the second letter should be small letter is this clear right so now so here you can see aluminum argon barium like this so many elements are given here uh, the most important uh, elements which are used in our ninth class so this is the important elements name okay so now <coughs> take the screenshot and uh, you learn the symbols <coughs> and of this all these elements tomorrow i'm going to ask you some symbols before starting the class right chalo take the uh, screenshot of this one okay so right with this we stop today mm